So there are a lot of EVs on the market, even more that are coming seemingly every day. Some you might have heard of, some you might not. This behind me is the Jaguar I-Pace. You may have seen us cover it in the past, but I never had a chance to actually have the car in my garage and use it as my daily driver for the better part of two weeks. So driving an EV is kind of similar to driving an internal combustion car. Each experience is different. And this is a Jaguar, so performance is paramount. So it's got a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's gonna give you about 234 miles of range, which I found to be really accurate, but it's gonna get you from zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. And what's crazy with EVs is that like zero to 30 time, the instant torque, there's really like no curve. It's like a vertical line. It is feels incredibly fast to drive. That's one of the favorite things about the iPace. The performance and the handling were absolutely incredible. And you'd expect it from not only a car that like looks like that, uh, but also from a car in the Jaguar portfolio. The iPace behind me is the first edition. It's a new car and the first edition kind of comes loaded with pretty much everything. Uh, it's stickered around $85,000. Almost every option box is checked, so you can price it down if you want to order one, but this has everything on it, and it's got a lot of kit sort of built into the car. So there's a couple of cool things about the design. It was, and they did something like different with the car. It's not a big like package overall, but there's a decent amount of space. It's a, called a cab forward design, so obviously there's no engine in there. So they kind of pushed the front of the car up a little bit, sort of maximize the space that you have in the back and it kind of makes like a mean looking car. The tech inside is stuff that we've seen from Jaguar and Land Rover in the past. It's their in-control touch pro duo and it works and it works well. It's a, a widescreen orientation. It's a beautiful interior sort of any way, <laughs> any way you slice it. Uh, the seats are more sport seats. So if, you're, if you like that sort of more sporty bolstered on the side feel, you're gonna dig it here. It's a good looking car, you expect that from Jaguar, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how the car is being propelled, it matters how it's going to drive, how it's gonna feel every day when you're behind the wheel. It's a sporty feel uh, inside of the iPhone, kind of you expect it, I guess, from a car that looks like this. It's a really tightly tuned, uh, suspension. It does have air suspension, so it will automatically adapt to stuff, uh, but you definitely feel like you are driving a sports car and you feel sort of every bump as you go along with it. But with that, I don't know if pick up on camera, you get that like throw you back in your seat acceleration, and you also end up with this on your face quite a bit. Uh, I do really like what they've done with the display in front of the driver. It's adaptable, it can change, depending on how big you want a map. You can have a map in front of you. You can see, obviously, your range. I've got it set instead of showing car information to show me sort of the media that I'm listening to, and you can control it just with the steering wheel. It's been nice to have. And as somebody who's never really driven on anything with a heads-up display, I really like having a HUD. When you drive a car and you, you, know, you floor it, a normal you know, internal combustion car, you, you know, think about your, your gas mileage and sort of how much gas you've burned up. Since I charge my car every night, I don't really think too much about how I'm driving unless I have to drive somewhere really far where I got to be a little more conscious of range. I don't generally ever think about like how I'm doing range-wise. I very rarely even look at it. And driving electric is actually changed how I drive all cars. So most EVs, and the iPace included, has something called regenerative braking. Essentially it takes the, what would be lost in like heat during the braking, and it sort of puts it back into the battery pack. What that means is when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, you can see it, the car brakes on its own, it kind of starts to come to a stop. So you get that electricity back into the battery pack and it also saves your brakes and saves your brake pads. Um, so I've gotten really used to driving a car with aggressive regen. You can tweak it in most cars. In the iPace, you can make it sort of kind of coast like it would in a normal internal combustion car, but I really like the aggressive regen. Uh, passengers might not, but even right now, coming up to a stoplight, I'm coming up to pretty much a complete stop and I didn't touch the brake pedal at all. Actually, now I have to accelerate a little bit to even make it uh, to the light. If you haven't lived electric, 
there's sort of a perceived thought of range anxiety. You know, this has a 234 mile range. What if I have to go farther? What if I can't find a charging station? There's a lot of like what ifs. And those are real concerns. I think they're holding a lot of people back from thinking about an EV or buying an EV or maybe making people buy a, a plug-in hybrid or, or something else altogether. But as somebody who's driven electric vehicles now for almost six years, the range anxiety tends to go away the more you use and the more you drive a car. And the iPACE is kind of a perfect example of that. I'm driving to Claremont, California most days, and that's a 40 mile each way commute, so about 80 miles. And that's more than most people's average commute. And think about the car, not like you do a gas car, where you have to go and fill up at a gas station once a week or every other week. Almost think of it like a cell phone. You plug it in at night, you wake up in the morning, and you've got a full charge. All you need at home is a 240 outlet. It's like what most dryers are. You plug it in and the car is full in the morning. And I've never really needed to drive more than 240 miles. In fact, 240 is about 40 miles more than I'm used to having on most EVs that I've had in the past. And I've never had that range issue. There are quick chargers that are coming online. This is capable with DC quick charging. It'll charge your car faster. But those are more exceptions than the rule. If you're driving to work, you can leave the car there and, and come back. And I wanted to test what's called phantom drain in EV. So if you leave your car overnight, say you've got hundred miles, when you come back the next day, are you gonna be down to 90 or 80? And that's a concern a lot of people have with EVs. If you just leave it idle, are you gonna lose a lot of range? Uh, and sir, the phantom loss here was not much at all. It was maybe one or two miles uh, overnight. So. You're getting that true 230-ish miles, you plug it in at night and you are really good. For those times where you need more, you can plan accordingly. If you have doing a road trip, you can plan to get to those charging stations. If you use the in-dash navigation, it'll route you to those. The range isn't as big a concern as I think people have it in their heads. Once you dive in and go electric, it becomes really easy. So I have most cars set to start charging after peak hours at my house. It's 11 cents a kilowatt. I could essentially charge this car from what would be empty to full for like under $10. And I've got solar panels on my roof, so now I'm charging the car for free if I wanna do it during the day when it's sunny. The amount of money that you save with an EV is really significant. The benefit of that outweighs any thought that I've had about range anxiety. And obviously I'm in California, so solar is an option for me. It might not be where you are, but there are a lot of ways to sort of get around and get past that range anxiety. You just have to sort of think more about how you use the car. So if you're going to a hotel or a road trip, you plan accordingly. And like an internal combustion car, if you wanna improve your efficiency, there are things you can do to get a higher miles per gallon. There's equivalent with electric car. Most EVs and the iPhase included comes with an eco mode. It's gonna reduce a lot of the heavy electric drains to increase your range. You could change how you drive. You can turn on regenerative braking. There's a lot of things you can do to sort of improve that. It just changes the way you drive. And after driving again electric for so long, I wouldn't even consider going back to a gas car. At least it would be hard for me to consider it. The cost savings, the fun of the instant acceleration, the instant torque, and the performance you get from an EV makes it really hard for me to consider going back to standard gas. 